Okay, class, welcome back. So in this unit, we'll get into um, cyanotic defects. So the first one we'll cover is tricuspid atresia. Uh, atresia, as a general term, means uh, failure to develop. So if you see this um, you know, anywhere in a condition, that's just generally what it means. So um, this, this condition is exactly as it sounds. The tricuspid uh, valve fails to develop. So what ends up happening um, you can see kind of here, right? Without any tricuspid valve, right? There's a closure there. There is no way for um, blood flow to move from the right atrium into the right ventricle. So you end up having a very underdeveloped right ventricle. The filling of the left ventricle and um, at, at all, right? Because we need the right ventricle to pump through the pulmonary artery to get to the to, to the pulmonary circulation to come back as the pulmonary veins into the left ventricle. We don't have that because there, you know, there's there's nothing coming through here. So all filling, right? All filling of the left ventricle, right, is accomplished by a usually by an ASD or a VSD, um, which ends up creating this right to left shunt. As you can see here, in addition to just generally, you know, impaired uh, volume in the, in the left ventricle. So um, if this will require surgery, right? And you'll do some sort of repair here or open up this, this valve and put a mechanical one. And then there's pulmonary valve atresia. So again, atresia just means the valve fails to develop. So there is no exit from the right ventricle, right? So uh, blood regurgitates into the left atrium through uh, the foramen ovale. And this is a reoccurring theme. We'll talk about this um, when we get into surgical corrections for these defects. Um, quite often, you know, these kids will may have a PDA or may have one of these uh, defects, like a, like a, a patent foramen ovale. Um, and they'll try to keep them open because these kids get, you know, the only way they get any circulation is because of uh, the PDA or the foramen ovale is still, still present, right? So uh, this is one of those, right? Um, and, you know, if that, PDA, right, if this patent ductus sarteriosa isn't there, right, there, there is no circulation going into the pulmonary vasculature at all, right, because there, this is completely closed here, right, completely closed. And because of the foramen ovale being patent here, you have, you know, again, deoxygenated blood shunting into the left side. Um, so we got deoxygenated blood into the, into the periphery. So again, Pulmonary valve atresia, pulmonary valve fail, fails to develop, no exit at all from the right ventricle, so they're still filling and filling and filling. Blood regurgitates into the left atrium, right? So we get some mixing of blood, um, and the lungs get perfused through this retrograde perfusion from the PDA present. Critical condition, the kid needs to be uh, you know, getting into surgery immediately, and they usually give them some sort of drugs to keep that uh, patent deuteriosis um, open or the kid won't survive at all. And then there's tetralogy of Fallot. So tetralogy of Fallot is made of four separate conditions that kind of simultaneously occur. A ventral septal defect, pulmonary valve stenosis, an overriding aorta, so usually falls over the VSD, um, the right ventricle hypertrophy due to pulmonary stenosis. So pulmonary stenosis, just like you know, aortic stenosis, any condition, pulmonary valve doesn't open well. Um, there's resistance to flow. Um, with this overriding aorta, right, you get um, some blood from the right side entering into the left circuit, into the aorta. You can see here the aorta is falling a little bit over the left side. You have a pulmonary valve that doesn't open super well, so pressure is a little bit higher here even. So you get some shunting um, from the right side into the left side as well across this VSD. So this kid, you know, appears cyanotic. They are blue uh, pretty soon after birth. Um, and, you know, sometimes it doesn't, depending on the severity, it, it may not get caught. And, you, you know, you may see things in the literature referred to these tet spells where kids, like, have these sudden episodes of cyanosis, unconsciousness. Maybe they were previously, you know, warm and pink and, and, and normal appearing. Um, and then they have these, these random events. Any, anytime a kid goes unconscious or has a syncopal event, that's not a normal finding, right? So with this, our early surgery is indicated and they'll go in and, um, and correct this. Then transposition of the great vessel. So positions of the pulmonary artery and aorta are completely reversed. So obviously right to left shunt because where we should have the aorta, right, over the left side, it's actually now over 
the right side, right? So everything going to the periphery is low oxygenated blood coming from that vena cava, right? The vena cava. Um, and then consequentially, everything from the left side, right, returning from the pulmonary veins is going back out into the pulmonary artery, right, back into the lungs. So big problem. These kids only survive if there is uh, some sort of ASD or VSD or paid inductive seriosis to get some mixing of blood out there. Again, because right now, the, you know, there is all of the oxygenated blood is just going back into the lungs, right? Um, and then all of the deoxygenated blood is just going right back out into the periphery, right through the aorta, because it's they're switched. Um, so this PDA allows some mixing of blood. Maybe they've got a you know an ASD or a VSD that allows some mixing is is a pretty critical condition. Um, the surgery that they'll cover uh, for this is is a, an arterial switch where they'll just switch the position of these of the great vessels. And then uh, another pretty common one you might see is hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Um, so hypoplastic meaning, uh, you know, inadequate um, development. So in these kids, uh, there is a inadequate development of the left ventricle. As you can kind of see here, it's just not fully developed. Um, and you've got this very small chamber. There may be some aortic valve or mitral valve involvement, but the primary, uh, you know, defect is this lack, like there's, there's no left ventricle here. So the child is completely dependent, you know, on the patent ductiria, patent Inductosateriosum for, for systemic perfusion. Again, you know, very weak or almost absent left ventricle, not much pumping going on here. So you, you know, you're hoping that there is, you know, at least a, you know, a, a shunt here to allow you know, what will be mixed blood um, to get out into the periphery because there's nothing coming out of here. You may also have an, an ASD in these patients Framino valve that's still patent, that's allowing some mixing as well, that's returning from the pulmonary veins, shunting from the left side to the right. But this is viewed primarily as a right to left shunt because you know, we're getting this deoxygenated blood coming from the vena cava, going through the pulmonary artery, shunting into the PDA. And again, just like a lot of all these conditions, you know, what they'll try to do in surgery is keep this open right, for as long as they can while um, they're waiting to get surgery. So without interventions, like this is a fatal condition. These kids won't survive more than maybe a week. And then there is total anomalous pulmonary venous return. The pulmonary veins don't connect to the left atrium. So they can connect in a few different locations, supercardiac, um, where the pulmonary veins come together and form an abnormal connection above the heart, superior to the vena cava. Um, in this type, a uh, mix of oxygen poor and oxygen rich blood returns to the right atrium through the superior vena cava. Um, in cardiac, um, the pulmonary veins meet behind the heart and connect to the right atrium. Um, the coronary sinus connects the pulmonary veins to the right atrium. And then there's infracardiac, where the, the pulmonary veins, which again are coming from the lungs with that high oxygen and blood, come together and form abnormal connections below the heart. Um, so a mixture of oxygen poor and oxygen rich blood returns to the right atrium from the veins instead of um, uh, from the, the veins of liver and, and inferior vena cava instead of going back to the left atria as they normally should. So again, instead of going, you know, instead of going um, to the, the left side or you know, the pulmonary veins are supposed to go back, you know, connect to the left to the left atrium and fill passively here, they go to the right side, right? And there's again there's three variants. Again, same with a lot of these conditions, right? The only way a child gets any perfusion, right? The only way they get um, is that they have an ASD to allow some mixing. Because right now there is nothing going back into the left side. It's all going to the right side. Uh, it's going to be mixed blood. Um, but yeah, the only way they get any, 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 any oxygenated blood of any kind um, or any blood out through the aorta is because of a, you know, maybe a patent or an ASD to allow some of that mixing. Um, let me just kind of clear, clean this up, right? Because, you know, there's nothing filling in here, right? There's, they, they aren't coming back to the left atrium. They're connecting to the right side. So hopefully that there, there is some, you know, defect here to allow, you know, this mixed blood here because everything is going back to the right side to then be pumped back out into the aorta. So these kids will be cyanotic on birth. Again, critical heart condition, um, you know, will require surgery uh, pretty soon after birth. So um, that is all of our cyanotic defects. Next, we'll get into how do we um, correct 
Uh, some of the more, more common ones you may encounter, most notably hypoplastic left heart syndrome.